My guest today is Raghuram Rajan. He is a professor of finance at the University of Chicago's Booth School of Business. Prior to that, he was the governor of the Reserve Bank of India, and before that, the chief economist at the International Monetary Fund. His academic work is focused on financial markets, credit cycles, and banking policy. He has published four books, the most recent of which is The Third Pillar, How Markets and the State Leave the Community Behind. Where are we in the pandemia? Do you think, like some people, that this is going to be uh, something that we can more or less uh, put behind us in a couple of months and go more or less back to normal? Do you think that it's unlikely and that the economy is likely to be underperforming for, for a very long time and that this is going to have long run implications? Well, uh, first, great to be with you, Luis, and uh, this is uh, a great thing you're doing. Um, it's uh, let's take the two parts the medical side and then the economic side on, on the medical side we now know that even in democracies it's possible to bend the curve to uh, have reasonable social isolation such that the um, number of cases uh, eventually gets contained to a moderate number and uh, the pressure on medical facilities falls considerably the, the peak load in a sense uh, gets attenuated. Now the key medical question is, uh, if we don't see a, virus, uh, a vaccine in, uh, in quick time, if we don't see very cheap and easy testing such that anybody who walks into a room can put their finger on, on some kind of a machine and get, uh, get tested for whether they have the virus or not, and if we don't see effective antibody testing, okay, you have had the virus, you're safe, you may go in, uh, then I think, and if we don't see a cure, of course, if we see a effective cure, take this medicine, you're okay in a few hours or in a, in a couple of days, nobody, the, the rate of death falls considerably, then it becomes something like the common cold or the common flu, not the, uh, the fear that we have of the, of the coronavirus. Uh, if none of these happen within the next year or so, uh, we're going to have to go back in a very measured way. I mean, the crowded bars and the crowded uh, uh, discos are not going to be possible, nor are the crowded cruise ships and not even crowded airplanes. So what is uh, the process by which we get back uh, through a substantial social distancing? Most people, you know, uh, go to office where they spread out. If they, if they are, they have to be in office and they try and work from home if they can work from home. Uh, industrial workers have adequate spacing. Those pictures we see of Chinese workers having their lunch six feet apart, that will be the norm for quite some time. Uh, you know, that means that uh, we go back from this low level of GDP we have reached with the lockdowns to a higher level of GDP, but it takes, uh, you know, uh, a year or more to go back to anywhere near parity with where we were. Of course, we've lost growth in the process, and uh, it's also quite possible that a number of firms fail. You know, restaurants won't be able to survive uh, this long period, uh, many of them. Uh, hopefully, the big uh, firms that have a lot of human capital and social capital, which you've written a lot about, they survive into uh, this uh, post-pandemic period. And so the bulk of employment is still, uh, is still there. And uh, new uh, restaurants, new uh, small shops start up quickly on the basis of, uh, of credit availability, and the economy gets back. It's not going to be a V-shaped recovery. It's probably going to be a delayed recovery uh, over time, but it's also not going to be the Great Depression. So, so now let's move on to, to some of these longer-term effects um, of, of these crises and how the world is going to change. And the first obvious thing that that fits with this very much with this virus with this pandemic um, the, the first big trend that we were seeing that fits with this pandemic is the trend towards let's say deglobalization or anti-globalization people like the, the chief trade advisor of trump people like donald trump uh, would see something like this and say you see what we were saying you need all the value chains to be localized uh, uh, at home we need to source all products at home so that we don't depend on foreign uh, suppliers. We need to make biggest, bigger barriers and bigger borders to avoid viruses coming in. 
people with that outlook potentially would be reinforced and we could see potentially a raise, an increase in walls worldwide an increase in um, in trade barriers and in all sorts of other barriers. Is this something that could happen? Should we be worried about it? How, how do you see this globalization, anti-globalization forces moving uh, or, 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 or reacting to this? I, I mean, it certainly is a possibility. Um, and uh, I think it depends very much on the leadership we have during the recovery, uh, of which the most important uh, person in the world will be the US president. Uh, I think the the tone that is set from there uh, essentially sets the tone in many other countries. Uh, the U.S. pushing a particular line tends to find sympathy in a number of other countries pushing that same line and offers support to those countries. And uh, it is quite possible uh, if we have uh, President Trump re-elected that we get a more nationalistic, divisive uh, um, sort of each country within its own uh, borders line, uh, that, that is unsustainable over the uh, medium to long term. Uh, but certainly that's a line that will fall uh, on some, um, you know, uh, some years that want to listen. Uh, and there are, you know, others in, in the world who would espouse that line, whether it's uh, Orban in, in Hungary or, uh, or others uh, uh, across the world. Uh, there is an element, however, of the recent experience, uh, there are a number of elements which would uh, suggest that a leader who wants to take the opposite stand could in fact make a strong case. So uh, how, how did it work out for global cooperation? Uh, or how did it work out for the fight against the pandemic with countries fighting each other for medical supplies, for countries actually hijacking medical supplies from each other's airports? Uh, countries uh, exercising their uh, might is right uh, attitude. Uh, yes, we are the biggest, so we, we can get the supplies we need. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. So that's one uh, kind of behavior that might alarm people. Well, what happens next time we have a big problem? Are we going to see this? We already saw versions of it in the trade uh, conflicts that happened before the pandemic, uh, might is right. And the whole idea of the post-World War, World War order was, yes, we'll give a little bit to might, but in general, we have to have rules that bind everyone. Uh, and, and that broke down with the trade conflicts, it's broken down even more with the fight over medical supplies, as well as the lack of cooperation. Some countries completely left on their own, even though uh, I mean, they belong to unions, they belong to the uh, larger group of nations, and uh, very little help forthcoming uh, at that point. So that is one thing that, uh, that the um, globally minded will point to. The other is, uh, no country is an island. Uh, even if you build high walls, immigration, legal or illegal, will always happen. Uh, we know that there are so many ways uh, you know, borders are crossed. I mean, the whole point of uh, believing this was a Chinese disease or, or pandemic and it would stay in China was, uh, you know, we, we realized the world is too integrated for that. And before we know it, it's everywhere in the world. So you can't uh, deal with the virus uh, anywhere until you've dealt with it everywhere. Otherwise, it'll come back in some form or the other. Mm -hmm. And so I think this emphasizes the need for global uh, cooperation, not just amongst the rich countries, but amongst all countries. The next phase of the virus will be developing countries and emerging markets, which haven't even got into the fight yet in a big way. And, uh, you know, if, if they're not careful, what happened in, uh, in Italy, in Spain, in, in the United States uh, will seem mild compared to what happens there. So uh, I think uh, this may actually convince us that we are one planet and we cannot turn our uh, faces away from what's happening elsewhere. And that means, again, more, more focus on how can we cooperate better. So, so that's, that's, a hopeful, that's a hopeful finish. <laughs>